Hi, this is Jeremy Keller, Director of Recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is episode 56. On this week's episode, I sat down with two of Oakley owner operators and got some straightforward answers on some topics like home time, making money, running areas, dispatch. So I think you're going to want to hear what they got to say. So hang with us here in just a minute. But first, before we get started, let's check in with Vicki Chastain on this week's Need to Know segment sponsored by Aero Truck Sales in Springfield, Missouri. Every driver will experience difficult driving conditions from weather, road conditions, and other drivers during their time behind the wheel. And safe situations, that's this week's Need to Know segment. You're responsible for keeping yourself, others, and your cargo safe. Don't let anyone push you to do things that aren't safe, including driving too fast, going over your hours, or anything else that puts your safety and the safety of others at risk. Ice, snow, rain, and fog create unsafe driving situations that require you to be extra cautious and watch your speed while driving. It's an important skill that truck drivers learn how to drive safely in poor conditions. I'm Vicki Chastain, and that's this week's Need to Know segment. Let's take a quick break and talk about Aero Truck Sales. Keith Wilson and Trey down in Springfield, Missouri, those guys do a fantastic job on selling trucks to owner-operators that are looking to come on to Oakley Trucking and just want to make sure you guys know about them. We've dealt with them a long time. Uh, they are no leases, straight financing, uh, specializing first-time truck buyers, five-year or newer tractors, all makes and models, less than 400,000 miles. They, they run a great program there. The best thing I like about them is service after the sale. Be sure and uh, tell them you heard all this on the Oakley podcast, and they'll also give you a choice of $600 worth of fuel or $600 truck accessories, or they'll pay half your first month payment if you finance with transport funding. Check them out. Call Keith Wilson at Aero Truck Sales, 573-216-6047. Give them a call and let them know you heard it on the Oakley Podcast. Okay, let's get back into our conversation with our guys from Oklahoma. You've been here how long, Greg? Roughly four and a half years. Uh, have you done dumps or hoppers? No, just hoppers. Just hoppers? Just hoppers. Where you live at? Medford, Oklahoma, North Central. Okay. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. Well, not right in the middle, north central, right in the middle. But gotcha. Probably about 17 miles from Kansas line. Oh, okay. So that's not, how far is that from here? Oh, it's 140 miles, but it's just straight north Phoenix where we load out of all the time. All right. So it's a, probably was at one time a really good location. All right. Gerald, how about you? I'm, I live in Jacksonville, Arkansas. Uh, I'm originally from a little town, uh, Rice and Duck Capital of the World, Stuttgart, Arkansas. No kidding. So, uh, Hoppers what is what I grew up seeing at Producer Rice Mill and Rice and Food, you know, hundreds of trucks during harvest season just lined up for days to get unloaded. Now, you guys, I don't know your background. I know a little bit Gerald's background. What was your background before coming here, Greg? Trucking. Where'd you work at? This is 43 years of this. Wow. Since oh, probably the day of turning 18 at that time or the, the day after. I've never got out. I've been out of it. I've dispatched and done everything, but, but I've always, except for till 77 till probably 81, I've always owned one or two trucks, whether they're sitting or driving. I won't put a driver in one, but I've, I've, I've got three now. So, so uh, it's a... Uh, Any uh, blood? Huh? Oh yeah, I, I mean, I love it. It's easy. It's, it's, it, 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 it. It's what you want to do. It's like a farmer, or it's anything. You you get into it, and it, it's just it, it's simple. It's something I know how to do. I mean, I can drive it backwards, forwards. It doesn't matter. But it's a good deal. And that ain't easy to do. No. <laughs> well, I mean, you've got people that. I mean, the only thing that's going to make you quit someday is health or, or whatever. I mean, I mean, I, there's no. It's not really strenuous anymore because I don't go. I used to go all over. But now, if I'm, I'm pretty close to four or five states, that's a lot easier than fighting with cops and people. And yeah. the roadways are just flooded right now. They, it's a mess to me. But it, it's a good life. Makes you feel better, closer to the, the house, I guess. Well, you guys, Oakley has made it. Man, you can get home every weekend, you or or not, or whatever you want. I mean, it's it, the people are pretty easy to get along with. And it's it's not a fight all the time. I mean, well, I was in that flatbed. You'd be out a month at a time, and you'd work. Uh, of course, your work days were Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and you'd set Monday, Tuesday, and went, you know, 
And this is just so flatbed's what you did before you came oh, here. I've done everything. I've hauled wide loads, gas, diesel. Okay. I mean, it, it was just a various of stuff that went on over the years that uh, I've tried, and nothing has really worked out. I mean, it's got to do with really to me is is being paid loaded and empty. Mm. And uh, because uh, you get paid, I mean, a lot of times that flatbed you'd set two, three, four days, and then guess what? Deadhead three or four or five hundred miles, and not get paid for that. This makes a big difference. I mean, it makes a big difference. Whether it's the highest paying deal in the industry or not, I don't know. But I own a a grain trailer at home and two trucks, and this still pays better than dragging my own grain trailer if you're going to haul grain. So you guys do a little more than grain, but still, it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that paying loaded and empty is something a lot of people yes, don't realize. I think. Oh, I. I and that adds up. I mean, that deadhead. And not even just dead. I think, you know, when I, when, I, when I talk to people and try to recruit people over, you know, the one thing I lead with is that, that you know, they play loaded and empty miles. But to, to actually pay a few surcharge on empty miles, I mean, where are you going to get that at? Right. You know, that's just that's mind-blowing that a company right. is willing to, you know, pay you a, a this, you know, few surcharge on empty miles just like they're loaded miles. Now you came, Jerry. You come from RL carriers, right? I come from R uh, R and L carriers. I had 15 years there doing line haul and P and D, which is a uh, pickup and delivery, alongside of a, 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 a good military career. Actually, I was teaching at the University of Mississippi. I was assistant professor for ROTC there at Ole Miss, and when I I took a military leave from R and L to go there for three years, kind of like a farewell tour, getting ready to retire with 25 years in. Awesome. And I seen Oakley all the time because Arnell had a terminal right off of Broadway down the street from where Oakley was and that's the main lane when yeah, people come in, in North Little Rock. So uh, I used to see the trucks, the big fancy trucks and I was like, man, you got to have a million dollars to go in and work because those, <laughs> you know, them high end trucks and not knowing it was probably the best kept secret in Arkansas, you know, for an owner operator. Uh, the day I got off of work and I was on my way home and I said, I'm, I'm just going to step in there and I went in and uh, I met you. Uh, yeah. And uh, Scott, and rest in peace to uh, Scott Heron there. And uh, I just said, hey, you know, I'm, I want to come on board. What do I need to do? And Scott gave me uh, an app. Uh, he sent me an email with the application on it, and I filled it out. And and by the time I got home, he had already called me and said, hey, man, you, you approve. And I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, a perfect CSA score yeah. <laughs> or whatever that, you know, and, and then meeting all the other qualifications. And then, uh, Who's your dispatcher now? Uh, Seth is my dispatcher I'll now. tell you what, that, that makes a big difference. Your dispatcher? Uh, oh, hell yeah. I mean, it, it, the, if you can't get along with your dispatcher, you're going nowhere. I mean, you'll hear it all, all the time. Eh? They're not happy or somebody's not with this or that. But, man, that communication. Uh, communication is the key with all of it. If you can't get along with them, you're not going to go nowhere. But if you can, it's just wide open. I mean, you, whether it's getting home or whether it's 3,200 miles a week or whether it's whatever it all is, you got th them guys are key right there. Yeah, but I think that communication piece go both ways. Because I oh, think sure. as drivers, what we do when we get a load, we we tend to think that we exempt from communicating again. You know, even when I got a load, I still want to let Seth know when I'm going to arrive somewhere because they. They do do a good job of pre-planning, you know. Just because I got a load on it doesn't mean I'm dead at that moment until I get that load off. You know, if I let Seth know that I'm going to be arriving in, say, Irving, and I'm probably going to be unloaded at a certain time, he's already got me planned to go out of Irving to Davis because, you know, some of those places on a time crunch and they're closing at 3 and he needs to get you yeah. moving again on Mill Creek. And, and it works out well that way because I'm never waiting for a load. Yeah, I'm just know. saying, if, you, if I can't get along with you, right. it's not going to work. Yeah. But uh, I, I get along fine. Well, and you got to have that communication, whether it's good or bad. Or bad, right. Well, they, they can stretch that if they can't get along later on. But, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, when, if you're going to be negative all the time about everything that goes on, right. that don't work. Right. But right now it's pretty darn simple. But the good part of that is if you got a problem with a dispatcher, though, man, you got that card, you can call anybody. I mean, I've called you know mm -hmm. Jeremy and, and had an issue, and he's got tons of things to worry about other than, you know, drivers having a problem with a dispatcher. and. He'll talk to me and he, you know, he'll tell me, hey, look, you know, you just need an ear and I'll listen. 
And sometimes that's all a driver needs, someone just to hear him out and say, hey, you know, I'm having these issues. Or if not, he'll push you over to Scott or Manny or JP. I've had a little old man tell me for four years, you need to go on. I'm still here. <laughs> he, he tells me what I need to know, and I just chill out eventually. Right. It's like a mom or a dad. It just, I just got to chill out. and Yeah, you're right. Well, listening, you know, we talk about that a lot of times in, in, in the office with dispatch. you got to listen to the drivers because – They've been doing it a long time. Right. I mean, and the majority of us had never been in a truck. And we got to listen to what they're telling us and take it to heart because they're out there doing the job. And that makes a big difference. It, you know, you hit on a good one there. Communication and then listening is a, mm -hmm. is a big deal mm -hmm. uh, to make it work because your tractor, our trailer, we all got to make a living off that right. and do it, do it right. So, so at, you know, making a change for somebody thinking about buying a truck or already has a truck and coming to Oakley, what would you tell those guys? It was easier for me to get started as an owner operator than it was for me to get boarded for a company job at r &L. That office with Miss Wendy, they make it so easy, so, so easy. How? I come in, I had all this money for a down payment, didn't know where to go to start even looking for a truck. Uh, the paperwork that I thought that I was going to be – responsible for, you know, getting this truck, you know, the tags and all of that, the insurance and all of that. I didn't do any of that. I mean, even my 2290 was, hey, come over here. I'm going to create you an account. And she said, I just need you to put a password in it with a pen. And next thing you know, I get, a, you know, something in the mail said my 2290 was paid. Of course, I wrote, a, you know, a check or yeah. my credit card, but she took care of all of that. And then they don't just leave you there once they bring you on board. The next year, they give you a notice. They send you, you know, stuff through your Qualcomm, or they send you emails and say, "Hey, this is come and do." You know, we'll take care of it for you, or you can take care of yourself. And when she set up the account, she she's a user on there, so she gets to go in and say, "Hey, you know, I'm gonna do this for you," and she'll log in for you and take care of your 2290. The place, if you want to run Oakley plates, they do it. The insurance. Uh, they, they, they do it all. It's a one-stop shop. It's like going to Walmart. <laughs> you know, when my wife want to go grocery shopping and I want to go pick stuff up for hunting, we go to Walmart. We don't have to go to Sporting Goods and Kroger. We can do it all at one stop, and Oakley but, is that place. But wasn't you nervous about changing jobs? I think as humans, we all are nervous with change. You know, we get comfortable and we get in a groove. It's kind of like car insurance. How often do you shop for new car insurance once you have State Farm or all state you, you don't and you don't even know if you're getting the best deal or the best rate good point so we all get nervous when we think about change even change management or whatever not we all get nervous when we're comfortable with doing something a certain way and then you say hey we're gonna we're gonna pivot and do something different so by nature and human nature we're we all nervous when it comes to change but i like many others on the facebook page that we have here in oakley should have done this 20 years ago so a lot of guys are that want to come over here um, or are over here I mean you guys being on operators you're concerned about your equipment and tell me about Oakley's equipment I mean you know that's a big deal with people is is what kind of trailer am I going to be pulling and that's something that I think we don't stress near enough to them you know and the equipment side of it well, I work, like I said, with our nail carry, which is an LTL company, and most of your LTL companies, like your Old Dominion, your Estes, and FedEx, and ABF, they're a seniority-based company, right? So if you're a top guy, got 20, 30 years with the company, you typically have the newest truck, you typically have the newest trailer. And I could say this and probably jinx myself and be out of my trailer mm -hmm. next week, but I pull a 21-model Hopper with 13 months in, and they don't, your dispatchers, they don't look at that. They just say, hey, I got this trailer on the yard, and you know go hook up to it but i'm i'm comfortable if they gave me a 15 model or 21 model because they they are very meticulous about the upkeep of their equipment like the trailers are top notch if i have a blowout on the road you know it's, it's not like hey you want me to get this cheap chinese tire or this uh this recap no they have a michelin account with these four big chain of lows and ta and places like that and and, and they spare no resources to get you back on the road with the best of the best you know michelin tires and stuff like that bridgestone what about so. your experience greg with equipment i haven't had much trouble of anything with them uh the tarps i mean if, if you call in and of course i guess you got to go through your dispatcher which goes to them and but they get you in they'll call you on your phone 
They want to know where you're at, where you eat. You're talking about in the shop. In, yeah, in, in North Little Rock, okay. and they'll have a spot for you. Uh, I haven't had a light out. I haven't had – I mean, if you have any problems, they'll take care of it. I haven't had anything that caused me a problem. It's just you usually got to get down there so they can do it. So they're pretty good. I mean, the tire counts, the, the, the tarps, the – I don't have a whole lot of problems. I mean, I don't. So you don't, I, you're not in the trailer shop very often. I mean, no, I don't try to go to Little Rock a whole lot. I mean, uh, I'm an Oklahoma, Kansas, and right. Texas, right around here guy. But, but but if we have something major, I mean, we and and I'm not stupid. I mean, you could go to T and W and get three tires put on or whatever. But it's easier. I think it's cheaper probably in your shop than it is up here. And I'll, I'll go down there to... But y'all get a little ownership of that trailer, don't you? I mean, you feel like... Oh, don't, oh, don't, don't get me yes. wrong. I went... This is probably my fifth trailer. I mean, I've lost my first one because uh, somebody was broke down, and so I left him mine and picked his loaded up, and this guy's was impounded. So this is probably my fifth trailer. Right. But, oh, hell yeah. You get... You get you, you know where every spot and scratch is it on it. Right. So I think that escrow keep us honest. You know, because I have worked with companies, and they'll they'll drop a trailer with flats and light out, won't report it. Well, it's escrow. It keeps these drivers honest, so Even you know that's your money, right? Is their money? Mm-hmm. They're gonna take pride in. Hey, you know, I, I got this trailer. It's my trailer because it's your escrow. So when you drop that trailer out on the yard, you want to make sure that trailer's in pristine condition, just like it was given to you. Because when I got, of mine, you do you? Yeah. I mean, if I drop it over at Little Rock or anywhere, I, I mean, when I leave it up. Because we did have an incident with that, right. and it wasn't my deal, but I got charged for it. But it it, uh, it was their deal, not mine. But i tell you something I learned about the shop, you know, uh, when you speak of lights. I didn't know that you can go in there and say, hey, you know, can I get a light kit? And they would actually give you spare lights and stuff, you know, like a, the, the LEDs and stuff. I do know to turn the screw and put right, one right. in. Right, right. They'll <laughs> give you a kit so you can do that, great. They give you a kit. You believe that? Right. Well, I tried to get them to order me up because these tempties take a different light. You just can't walk over here to Walmart and buy uh, one. They take sure. a different light. Right. It, and uh, they have to ship them up here and stuff. And I mean, it's two screws out and unplug it and put it back in get another one. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – it's. And I, I've witnessed on an occasion or two, you know, when you moved into the new high-rise building over there on the, yeah. on the, on the river there, uh, I've seen Mr. Benny come out, you know, when drivers come in and they're in a rush and they're trying to maximize that clock and they don't want to get a trailer washed out. And I've seen Mr. Benny come out there and say, hey, Leroy, we're not taking advantage of this free truck wash we got here. I mean, trailer wash here. Right. And he'll make those guys circle back because he takes pride in those trailers. Those trailers, that's an advertisement. That's a billboard right. that says Oakley on there with a number. So if we ever trying to recruit anybody, number one, Drivers are the best recruiters that you're going to find. And then you got your name on the trailer and you got a number. So it kind of helped with the recruiting aspect. It of sure when messed you have that good. up when we could, could go down by the river and wash out because then people that couldn't go clean their trailers yeah. out before they'd done it. Yeah. That was a piece of cake there. But, yeah. uh, but now we got that third bay. Well, yeah, you know, COVID, it's been shorthanded, I think. Yeah, I think it's better. I think we're it's back, coming up, back around. Uh, back uh, up they, running they need now. to, I don't know, me and that. I don't know. That one guy was in there one day, and hell, he, his truck didn't have a speck of dirt on it, and they, he wanted to hold truck and trailer wash. Well, <laughs> yeah. go to the back of the line. I mean, there ain't no damn reason to do that, but, you know, and they did. They pulled me around and shut his door back in. That's, I said, all it needs is wash out, dude. I mean, and they understand that, and, yeah. and they'll help you if they can. What about uh, money-wise, you know, not, you know, you, you – Tell what you want, but money-wise, how do you think Oakley compares to other companies? I say this. Can I go, Greg? I say this. I I can only imagine if I was on child support now, making no kind of money on making in Oakley, what I would be dish out of child support. <laughs> you but we can edit that out. But but uh, <laughs> I left a six-figure job when I was I was making about one nineteen in the Air Force, and I had to medically retire after the Air Force, and I was like nervous, like. Man, I, now I got to go back and get in this truck, you know, making about seventy-five, eighty thousand. 80000 I said, and I'm, and I'm okay with that. I have a military retirement to put with that. But I come over here, never owned a truck, got out here. In 10 months, I was able to make 151000 Gross. Gross. And even after the fuel discount and all that, I still was able to, to net about ninety 
of that. Awesome. So, you know, with the with the discount that Oakley, you know, get in the industry, with the fuel and all of that, I... It's all in what you want to do. Right. I don't work that hard anymore. I've got 43 years. I don't, ha- I don't work that much. I have a level of where I'm at. If you run 3,000 miles a week, if you want to stay out there and do that, figure that up. Mm-hmm. That's quite a bit of money. Now, yeah. if you're paying for three ex-wives, three kids and a cell phone and, and a <laughs> laptop, uh, an ex- Escalade, let's don't forget the Harley, the boat, the wife, all this, that truck can't pay for everything. That's what a lot of people think. Uh, that truck can't pay for everything. But I'll tell you what, I make what I want to make here. It's not because I'm not getting dispatched or they know what I want to do. And I don't I don't run that many miles. I mean, I'm steadily 2017, but I, I, I make well enough money for my living. Now, if you have all these expenses, you can't go to work Friday morning and come home Friday at noon and make it. It just won't work. You have to, to Monday morning. Yeah, you, yeah. You have to move a little bit, and uh, I, I don't know. I, I, but the, that's the, you know, I think that may not be a lot of places with, for guys. They feel limited. Well, with us, you, what you're telling me, you're not. You're limiting yourself. Oh, you know, that's. But that's if, my if choice. You, your choice. If it's if, not yours, it's mine. If I'm you not wanted forced. to make more, is I mean, the money's there to make, and that's I, what I went. I missed all of my daughter's schooling, all of it. And I got my son's senior year of football because I thought you would go, not you, but yeah. the, the company I worked would go broke if I didn't haul that load. I missed all that. Good Lord, if you guys would have been in business, you was in business, but I don't think you was at this magnitude over here where you could have been home. I mean, that meant a lot. And, you know, we get – I get the feeling a lot of times, I mean, and to a lot of people, home time's more important than money. Oh, well, shoot, yes. and, and, and Unless with, you're already broke. I mean. And but. with the money, you know, I, I work for companies, and I drove for an owner-operator before, you know, and you're trying to hit that magic number of 26, 2,800 miles. But here at Oakley, I don't even sit down and keep a tab of how many loaded miles and how, how many empty miles and if I hit 2,500 miles because I make good money if I ran 2,000 miles or 2,100 miles. And, you know, you can thank 3M for detention sometimes. I yeah. can make I can clear 3,500 a week and don't hit but 2,400 miles. So I don't really chase the miles, per se, with this company because Oakley customer base is so stout, so strong that – you don't the miles don't matter these 350 mile runs to malarkey or 330 to irving man they add up quick they add up quick and, and you I, think if you go back on a friday and unload on a saturday afternoon that's 700 more right i mean it, i mean it's it's you right. it's not really you get all the miles you want you can you can sit over here and like it's been time I have to go and do stuff at the VA because I'm a veteran of this, a hundred percent disabled veteran, and I have to take off and go do something at the VA to keep, you know, my VA claim and stuff, my benefits and stuff. And I might miss a Monday and Tuesday, and, and we don't sweat it because the weekend runs they're so you can go make eighteen hundred on a Friday, Saturday, and on a Sunday like it's nothing, and be home every night doing it. Yeah, you can go to Dangerfield and Irving and Glenwood back to Irving. And you can make two thousand dollars in two and a half days, and be in your bed two of those nights. So. Well, and that tells me, you know, that's why I say a lot of times home time is more important than making money because we have a lot of work on the weekends, and I see those dispatchers struggling every Friday to try to get guys to work to cover the loads. Right. You know, and that tells me, you know, home time is important right. to to truck drivers, and I don't blame them. You've been right. gone Other all week. Too. I mean, I have kids. Right. It, it doesn't matter. They're the same problem. I'm sure that phone is 24 hours a day, isn't it? And yeah. I've done that life, and I don't like that either because yeah. people just mess with you if they can. But uh, some things are malarkey. <laughs> uh, malarkey will screw with you. 3M will. I mean, everywhere you can set a lot. But yeah. uh, I don't know. My, my guy knows what I want. I'm, I'm pretty happy with yeah. whatever I do. Sometimes you get hung up, and that's fine. Just tell me you're hung up. It doesn't matter. I'll do whatever, but it's uh, – I want my time home. I'm trying to yeah. do other things because I'm old and yeah. I, don't, I, I don't want to drive a truck yeah. every day. Oakley, Oakley, though, I can say though, this company here, it 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 should have a low, it should have a slogan that says, you know, the company that 
doesn't allow making a living to get in the way of living because you you control your home. You time. get in the way of living. Yeah, you get yes. You Let control me tell you, your I home. I have time. two trucks at home and a, and a grain trader. And uh, when you put it on paper, I can make more money working here pulling your trailer that I don't own tires, brakes, lights than I can pulling mine. You figure that up a little bit. Nobody, I mean, I've seen people quit and they've run their mouth. Well, let me see the paperwork. I, I can hear what you're saying, but I don't, I, 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 I get the same apps that they are, you know, the, the, the broker loads, the people. Right. And uh, show me what you're doing. This is easy. It's simple. It's not stressful. Uh, like I said, dispatcher is your best part. If you can get along with them, you want off, you're off. If you don't. Well, and I think a lot of, a lot of owner operators over the years I've done this, they fight that control issue. I, I I want control of everything. I want to dispatch myself. I want to have my own trailer. I want all that. And I try to convince them that's not the best way to go. That's not Oakley's model, business model. We feel like, just like you said, Greg, we take care of all that stuff for you. You might have said it, Jill. Yes, I mean, we try to, where you're less stressful. Oh, yeah. When, right. when, when I don't have to, when, when Wendy says you got a credit card or whatever it is, yeah, well, that took care of your 22. That took care of the, I mean, this is a lot simpler than, than doing it by, I mean, it's, it, it can be done, but it, it's just pretty simple. You don't have to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about getting paid. You right. don't have to worry about finding your own loads. I think what's lost in it, that when you talk about control, is that if you had to find your own load, that broker's controlling you. Yeah. Oakley just has this customer base that, you know, that it, it feels like, oh, you know, I'm being told what to do. We even when you own your own business, even Amazon customers is yeah. their boss. That's everybody right. have everybody has a boss, you know. Uh, but back to the pay, you know, one thing I, that bonus. Let's not let's uh, not ignore that. Bonus. Oh, I seen some guys show me their uh, Transflow settlement. I seen a guy had a twenty one thousand dollar bonus. Yeah. Well, he probably had people he leased on or whatever you want to call. No, it. that's his annual. No, that's his bonus. annual bonus. He's been here like twenty five, twenty six years probably. or so, and he's probably what. 28 cents? Yeah, probably something I'm like loaded, that. I'm a loaded mile. Because it just keeps building up. It it's building it's five up. cents the first year, then it goes to right, six, six, seven, and there's no cap to it. Right. So as long as right. you're, you're here and it's paid on loaded miles, five cents a loaded mile your first year, and then it just keeps going up. Well, I, I figure year five, I don't, I wouldn't have to worry about taxes anymore. Yeah, right? there you go. Taxes. Pay you it's just so simple. I mean, they pay you a check. All you got to do is work, and, they, and it whether is. it's one load or ten loads or whatever, and all your stuff comes right out. It's right. The accountants love it because right there it is on one sheet. It's transparent. Know? I mean, you yeah, don't have to guess. You don't have to wait on if your check going to be deposit. I mean, there's no problem with your pay here. You, you never had a problem. With never had a problem. Paid. If you did, you could just call and say, "Hey, call your dispatch and say, hey, I, I don't think I got paid for for this, that, or other.'" And he'll send a message out to payroll, and he'll be right back on the phone with you and explaining it to you. You're like, "Hey, this is this is what went on with that," because we don't all know the contracts that Oakley have with certain individuals. We all assume that you get 10-hour detention, then there's places that have a four-hour, five-hour, six-hour cap, you know, but your dispatch, if it needs to be, he'll explain it to you. Do y'all do a lot of repeat loads? Used to. Used to. It's been so many times I wanted to give you a call, Mr. Jeremy, and say, hey, you know, I live right here in Jacksonville on 15 minutes from the terminal. All this big customer base that uh, Oakley has, surely I can get something dedicated, you know, like – like uh, Troutman and Mr. T. Larry, and I was like, man, I got to thinking, you know, I was talking to my wife just a week ago, and I told my wife, I said, you know what, I'm really kind of running dedicated because I run to about 95% of the same customers. Do you? When I, when I get a load, it's very rarely that I'm going somewhere that I hadn't been before. So that makes it a lot easy because I don't have to worry about do I go in through the west gate, the south gate, do I need to check in on the scale first, do I need to – it makes it so easy. I know where to go in at and start unloading myself. You, you, you learn the customers and you know, and it makes it that much easier. You're not sitting around uh, trying to figure out what you got to do. And I got friends that run their own trucks and they go to them rail yards in Memphis. They spend four or five hours just trying to find a box or a chassis to hook up to. Oh, man. And then they're going somewhere that they've never been before. And it just that eats at your profit. Yeah. But with, with Oakley, though, yeah, it's pretty much like I'm, I'm running a dedicated circle. 
Oakley got a good reputation? I think they have an impeccable uh, reputation, especially when you think about the professionalism. You know, coming from, you know, military background all my life since I was 17 years old, you know, and wearing a uniform and having, a, you know, the shave face and, the, you know, high and tight haircut and all of that. You know, we, we consider ourselves professional drivers, you know, but if you, you if your truck looked like crap and your equipment looked like tr crap, how much pride can you take in that? Because I, when I think of professionalism, I think of pride. It's hard. It's hard on a recruiting department to find guys like y'all. Yeah. There's no doubt. I mean, because one, you got to work when you come to Oakley. We require you to work. You mm -hmm. believe that? I mean, we do. Mm -hmm. We require you to work, and that's a uh, a lot of people don't want to work. Uh, and then the the caliber of people we're looking for have a good job typically. So we're trying to pull them from their good job. You know, whether to like you, Gerald, to buy a truck and mm -hmm. become an owner operator mm -hmm. or just swap jobs, come from flatbed. And we're trying and it's tough. And y'all know as well as I do, they're not going to believe us as recruiters and they're going to believe us, but so to a certain right. extent, I'm still right. got to talk to some drivers and I got to right. see some proof. It's but Greg, I, I would tell you this on recruiting there. I know a driver personally that has made $50,000 in just recruiting bonuses. Well, Sam had seven. Sam. I'm telling you, it's there to make. Right. Last name is, but right. He, he had seven. This guy made like 280000 he said, with a hopper bottom. I said, he worked every day. He's running outlaw. He's got two logs, two, you know, quad cones. How is he making it that? But then he talked yep. about it on YouTube. He's, he's getting $50,000 in re recruiting bonus. That's Rob. He's talking about Rob. Yeah. Ninety thousand dollars in recruitment. We could get more of them on there, like Rob. That would be that. Right. That, that, that helps. I mean, right. so you need. To, I mean, not everybody's going to take advantage of it, but we're just trying to get the word out so you do. Now that's some great information from two of Oakley's finest owner operators, Greg Sink and Gerald Hogan. I really appreciate them sitting down with me and telling their honest opinions of Oakley Trucking and what's happened to them. And it was really good to talk to them. I hope everybody enjoyed this episode of the Oakley Podcast. And as always. Follow us on all social media. I'd love to hear your comments on what you think about the podcast and what you want to hear in the future. I'm Jeremy Kellett, and we'll talk to you next week.